Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pathway to Results podcast. This is your boy, DG. We are here, live and in effect. This episode, I wanted to break down to get you, hopefully, to understand. And understand when I say this, this is only from my own personal perspective. I can never tell you what absolute truth is. You, my friend, are going to have to go out and find it for yourself and experience it for yourself. But this... When you understand this and can see this from maybe a universal perspective, you'll start to see why everything happened in your life. So you saw the title of this. And a lot of times as being a human, we never take time to be. We never identify with the spiritual side. We never identify with the uh, uh, the non-physical, the part of you that's infinite, the part of you that is unharmed or unscathed in anything in the physical world. So we only identify with the mind, which lives in a root of survival, or we will identify with the body, which is really just a slave to the mind. So if the mind is afraid of essentially death, the end, the body will only correspond to that. So if you look at human beings, this is why we have such an innate fear of death. You know, we're the only creature that knows it dies. We're the only creature that knows there's a quote unquote end. But as far as we're concerned, maybe... We're the only creature that also knows that it's more than just its body or its mind. So the reason why I'm saying this is because this episode I sat and thought about, I was at the gym today and I was working out and it was like, we always talk about trauma. We always talk about trauma and inner child healing and we always do that, but we never take time to like, we only talk about it on the physical plane and we never see how or why it's happening even from the spiritual plane. So we're going to break this down today so maybe you can have a, a deeper understanding, a more universal perspective of this thing that you would call trauma in your life. And you can start to see that hopefully that this trauma was needed for your necessary evolution. It was nothing that was supposed to hurt you. It was nothing that was supposed to work against you so long as you understood that you were not your mind and you were not your body. So let's do this. Let's just imagine Okay, because I had I had this question always that I asked when I was growing up. I was a kid. I remember being a kid. I'm like second, third, fourth grade. I always had this question of asking, where did I come from? Where did I come from? Every Sunday I'm gathering and sitting in this church. I'm watching my dad popping all these peppermints because he's bored out of his mind while someone's sitting in the pulpit talking. And I'd be sitting here wandering. And I'm like, okay, we talk about where we go when we die, but we never, ever, ever talk about where we come from when we live, I'm sorry, before we're born. And the question I asked was, okay, we're so for certain what goes somewhere when it dies, but how come, how come that thing that lived for eternity, right, because it went to quote unquote heaven, that's what we were told, how come that thing, if it's eternal, that we would refer to as the soul or spirit, whatever you want to refer to it as, how come if that thing is eternal on the back end, it's not eternal on the front end. Because I don't know about you, but if you look at the definition of eternal, I was always taught, and I always thought that eternity meant forever. No end, no beginning. No end and no beginning. So if there's no end and no beginning, where where did this part before it came into the body? Because we know what happened, where it went. Where did it come? Like, where did it get in this body? So this is the question I used to ask myself. So let's play this game. What if, what if? That which you actually are is just nothing more than conscious awareness. That's all it is. It's just consciousness. And what I mean by that is self-awareness, awareness of the self, the indwelling spirit, this energy, this force that is fully conscious, is fully aware. You cannot articulate it. You cannot describe it. You can only experience it. This is why human beings go to the ends of the earth and will do this and learn how to do that all just for meditation because meditation was the union. It was your ability to now have the awareness of the self and why meditation is so powerful because it essentially gives you the tools so you can start identifying and experiencing the awareness of the self. So what if, what if this game that we're playing right now that we call life and we're just looking at it as a game, what if you came into this physical existence playing the game of hide and seek. So the self, the spirit, consciousness, it wanted to play the game with itself because it was fully aware. It knew everything. It was self-aware of itself because it was nothing but pure awareness. And it wanted to play the game to see what it would like to experience the opposite end of forgetting itself. 
So it incarnated, it, it created this physical, this lower vibrational housing unit that we call a body, and it used this thing that we call the mind so it could forget itself. And by forgetting itself, it then was going to play the game of remembering itself. And it kept doing this over and over and over and over, infinite times over and over again. What if this was the case? Then if this was the case, it would make sense why we would experience trauma. It would, it would make sense why we have a fear of abandonment. It would make sense why we have a fear of death. Because when you understand, good God Almighty, they didn't want me to, but I'm going to go ahead and start preaching. When you start understanding the way this universe works, we've talked about this before, that it's the opposite energy. It's the darkness that gives context to light. Do you see? It's the pain that gave context to pleasure. Do you see? It was, it was uh, the heartache and the heartbreak that, that gave context to you experiencing full love. So when you understand this, on a cosmic level, on a spiritual level, this is what's happening with spirit. This is what's happening with the self. It wants to see what it's like because it already was everything. But let, yo, let's play the game of forgetting. Let's play the game of forgetting. And now we're on a journey in this physical incarnation as a human to remember, to conjoin, to bring back to what was. So here's my point. If you look at every teacher, every teacher that came along... Every one of them was teaching this. Every single one of them was teaching this. So when we use the word enlightenment, 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 enlightenment. Hold on now. Let me finish. Let me say it a couple more times. Enlightenment. In, in, in. Think of it like this. In is you uh, um, entering. Light, light, light. Meant, meant. Meant is mind. Meant means to think. So it's you allowing the light to enter your thoughts, enter your mind, meaning you were allowing the spirit because all the spirit was, was light. All it was, was energy. And now here's what it is. It's infiltrating this thing that we call the mind, the GPS of the car. And it's showering it with light because that's all everything was, was light. So by you coming into this physical existence of playing the game of trying to remember what it what you actually were because here's the way the the, the system set up in this game that we call the the universe or the university of earth it's meant for you to forget it's put in place so you do forget that's why if you look at social media if you look at movies you look at netflix you look at foods you look it are all of these things to get you to forget what you are because this was the cosmic game but because you forgot at some point, we call this an awakening, the soul was going to say, I cannot do this anymore. I have got to go find myself. I have got to go figure out what I am because there's a part of me deep down inside that remembered there was something more to life. There was something inside of me that just knew this just doesn't resonate. What is it with me? What is it? What is it? I don't know why. I, I feel like an outcast. I feel different from everybody. I'm asking questions. What? what, what? The soul says, I'm ready to start playing now. I'm ready to start going on this journey to finding and figuring and remembering what I actually was. Do you see how this works? Hold on now. Let me finish now. This journey that you're on had to come with trauma. It had to come with abuse. It had to come with heartache. It had to come with a, a war. It had to come with this illusion of separation. But when I, the reason why I say it's an illusion, because do you not know? That the thing that separated you was actually the thing that was going to bring you back. Do you see how this works? So you think. You think because he left you. You think because he left you that this was quote unquote bad. But you don't realize that the universe is always playing this dance of balancing everything out. And it had to figure out a way to balance you out. So what did it have to do? It had to hit you in a place that would hurt so much that you would let go. And now because you would let go, you would see things not from the wound anymore, but you would see things from the place of the spirit, the indwelling self, that which you actually are. Because the self never held on to anything because it realized and knew that this was just a virtual reality game and it was never to get caught up in it. 
Do you see how this works? So the reason why I'm saying this is for you to understand that your trauma carries carries a weight on a spiritual level. On a spiritual level. And I did not know this until I went through my own trauma. I did not know this until I got to see how my past traumas actually are what built me to this awakening vessel that I am right now. So understand this. If we look at it from the from the from the metaphor, the analogy of a of a of an alarm clock. What happens when the alarm clock goes off? Do do do. What do we do? We jump up. We jump up out of bed. Man, what the? Why don't you start thinking of your traumas? That's nothing more than your alarm clocks. So you had a trauma that happened when you was young. You went through a tough childhood. These things happened to you. Sorry, these things happened for you. But it was done without your awareness. You did not consciously choose these. Do you not know that this was the universe? This was the universe. And you can use whatever word you want. I do not. It does not matter. You can call it the creator. You can call it God. I don't give. It does not matter whatever language you want to use to describe this thing that I refer to as consciousness, self, awareness. What if all it was doing was setting the alarm? What if that's all it was doing? It was just setting the alarm. But the alarm clock wasn't going to go off until it was time for you to awaken. Good God Almighty, they ain't trying to hear me right now. They are not trying to hear me right now. What if, what if these things happened in your past and that was just you setting a bunch of alarms? Sorry, <clears throat> this was the spirit that existed outside of space and time that already knew at some point these alarms that we were setting through the abuse, through the trauma, through the fear of abandonment, through all of these wounds that were happening... All we're doing is setting these alarms right now, baby. They're going to go off at some point. And you know when they're going to go off? When it's time to wake up. We saw in 2020 what's happened. We're seeing what's happening. There's a mass awakening. Why? Because there was a bunch of spirits that had set their alarm clocks way, 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 way back when. And now all these alarm clocks are going off. So if you start looking around at society, if you start looking around at, at, at the world, the powers that be, and I say powers, I put them in air quotes. If you start looking around at everything, they're freaking out. They're freaking out. Why are they freaking out? Because they know all of these alarms are going off. All these alarms are going off. All these spirits are like, yo, wait, what? The Federal Reserve really isn't even federal? What? Wait, what's going on? What? People are starting to see, oh my goodness, we've been fed a lie. We have been fed a lie. Do not look at it as a lie. Look at it as basically the mechanism that was put in place. So when you awakened, you would know that you were awake. Have you ever been in a dream before? And you were in a dream and you didn't even know if you were asleep. You were what they call it, lucid dreaming, right? I've had dreams before. I'm like, am I awake? Am I asleep? What? It? Then I've also had dreams where I've been. I, I know that I'm in a dream. And when you know that in your dream, guess what? You can enjoy the dream. Do you not understand that that dream when you go to bed at night is nothing more than the microcosm of what's happening in your life right now? You believe that this is just real as can be. Just like when these kids put these VR headsets on, what they call an Oculus. And they put on an Oculus and they put them on and they walk around. And they 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 really think they're punching something right now. They're fighting whatever the game they're playing. They really think this is real. You get caught up in the game. You get caught up in the virtual reality and you believe that it's real. But really, you're just experiencing this game from an outside perspective. If you can have the awareness of recognizing and remembering that which you truly are, you will see that this was nothing more than a cosmic game for the spirit to learn more about itself. That was it. So on a spiritual level, your traumas are put in place. Because here's the other thing. If that which actually what you are exists outside of space and time, that means there's no future and no past. That means that all possibilities already exist in the spiritual world. So maybe if we start looking at our traumas as something that I, I, the infinite I, the real I, not the pseudo egoic I, it was put in place because I knew at some point I was going to come to a place where I was going to have to awaken so I could start to live my life's purpose and do what I have been put here to do. I'm only speaking from personal experience. Back four years ago, I had to get involved with someone who stole everything and be involved in a freaking movie. I had to be involved in this. I had to become a confidential FBI uh, informant and walk around here with two cell phones and a fake email address and contemplate whether or not I should take my own life. I had to be in that place. 
This podcast has helped you. These reels have helped you. These courses have helped you. But do you not understand that if I did not go through that, none of these things come to fruition? So, so my friend, my friend, you can start to see from a spiritual level that it was always working itself out for the expansion of your self-awareness so your ass could wake up when it was time. And this, my friends, is why all trauma was needed. This, my friends, is why it was encoded into the cosmic game. It was never something like, oh my gosh, this is the worst. This is... No, 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 no. It was just a game. What did Biggie say? It was... No, that was a dream. It was all a dream. Dream, game. It was all just a game. That's what it is. Play the game. Enjoy the game. Do not take the game so seriously. So here's what I started to do. And it may help you along your journey. I started to realize and see the connections to these things that were quote unquote bad. And basically how they produced quote unquote good in my life. And by doing this, I started to realize none of these things were actually bad. None of these things were actually like stopping or hurting me I just had to wait till I got a little further down the road and when I got a little further down the road I had some context and because I had context now I could reflect and because I could reflect I could gain the lesson I could see the positive attributes of that situation instead of only looking at it from the limited perspective that I was doing before. So as you keep doing this, you start looking back, extracting the lesson, getting what you needed from it. Now you see that everything that you encounter is nothing more than to help you later down the road. That's all it is. My kids get mad at me when I wake them up in the morning. <laughs> we got a little thing with my daughter. I got to get up around 630. She ain't going to speak to you before 650. She ain't saying nothing. You were talking about waking up on the wrong side of the... She, she going to give you the, the... She ain't going to say a word to you. But here's my point of this. No one likes to be woken up. Nobody likes to be like, what the... F I didn't... I was sleeping. It was so much easier. It felt so much better being asleep. You see this in the world. What do they say? Ignorance is bliss? Yeah, of course. Those who make the choice to say, I am not going to continue to live unconsciously, it's not going to be comfortable. And then you start seeing all of these things, these traumas, these abuses, they were all just trying to wake you up. That was it. But nobody likes to be woken up because it doesn't quote unquote feel good. It isn't about how it feels. It's not about how it feels. It's about what is it doing for my self-awareness. If I can go into those sticky, those icky, those, those stingy places or places that hurt and I can shine awareness on it, those things are actually for me. That was 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 for me. And this was all it was. This was it. This was all it was. So here's here's the perspective to help you in the in these times when it feels like this is so heavy. Oh my gosh, why is this happening? Why did he leave me? Why is she doing this? Why is this happening to me? I can't believe they died. Why is... Take a step back for a second. Take a, se a step back and ask yourself, what is it about this really that bothers me? Get the lesson. Extract the information from it because everything carries information. Extract the information. Okay. This bothers me because it makes me feel like nobody respects me. It makes me feel like nobody approves of me. Okay, cool. So really what the issue is is that you don't feel as though you're respected. You don't feel as though anybody validates you or approve you. That's really the thing. It's not the situation. So let's let's now, let's not be distracted by the situation. This is an, an internal thing. You do not feel respected. Okay? Why are you so worried about not being respected? Because like, I, you know, I don't know. Nobody ever respected me growing up. But, okay, let's stop right there. So really, you're taking something from the past and you're applying it to something that's happening right now unconsciously. Let's not be distracted by the past. Why do you need people's respect? 
Perhaps there's a part of you that never learned how to respect yourself. Because that which you give yourself, you will not seek it on the outside. If I know how to feed myself, I'm never going to ask you to feed me. Do you see how this works? If I know how to cook, I don't need you to cook for me. If I know how to feed myself, I don't need you to feed me. If I know how to build a house, I don't need a builder. Huh? I don't need somebody to do it for me. I can do it for myself. And that's what everything was. It was for you to recognize that what you were seeking on the outside, you were supposed to give it to yourself. Excuse me. Not give it to yourself. You were supposed to recognize it within yourself. So now you start to see that these situations are really just trying to show you the awareness from the level of the self. Good God Almighty, y'all ain't trying to hear me right now. It is to show you that you had already had it inside of you, but you forgot because this was the cosmic game. And because I forgot, I'm over here seeking. Sorry, <clears throat> the ego is out here seeking. Oh, does he love me? Does she love me? What do they think about me? Did I get enough followers? Hey, do I make enough money now? Hey, do, do, do you like my job? Hey, did I score enough points? It's seeking, 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 seeking on the outside. Also, so you could forget. And eventually, here's what's going to happen. You'll get the money, you'll get the car, you'll get the house, you'll get the accolade, you'll get all these things, and you will still feel empty inside. And at that moment, you will recognize, what the f***? What does all this mean? And this is when it will begin. The awakening process, the calcination, as they, the alchemist would say. Step number one, calcination. The old had to be burned off. But the only way to burn it off was for you to let go of it. And this is cosmically what's happening right now in life. It's just trying to get you to let go. That's all it's doing. It's just trying to get you to let go. It's just trying to get, because the spirit, the self, that which you actually are, the I am, that was on the spiritual plane, that was using the mental plane, that was carrying it on the physical plane, the spiritual plane never held on to anything. It never held on to anything because it already had everything. Do you see how this works? I do not want something. I do not desire something because I already am it. I already have it. I have the ability to create and produce the emotions that I thought that thing was going to give me. I do not need that thing to have these emotions, though. So the self, the spirit on a spiritual plane understands that these traumas are going to be the thing that will allow the soul on the mental plane to let go of these rigid identities and personifications or personal realities that the ego had unconsciously attached itself to. So the reason why life is difficult, the reason why it's um, painful at times is because of this one reason. The spirit is just trying to heighten the soul's awareness of it. People say, oh, what am I supposed to not have an identity? Understand how the mind works. The mind needs identities because the mind is in a constant state of survival. So because it's in a constant state of survival, it needs an identity. Because how can it survive without something to hold on to? This is what we call attachment. How can it survive without having a narrative? How can it survive without holding on to something in the past? How can it survive without creating this illusion or this, this, this expectation of what it could become? How can it survive? So this is why there's such a rigid attachment and why we do have identities. What did, what did, what did all of these enlightened beings, we'll use Jesus. You remember Moses was at the burning bush, the personification, the metaphor of this. What do you say? Who is this who's speaking to me? I am. I am. I always thought that was weird. How come it's not saying I am God? I am this. How? Because I am is everything. That is awareness. I am. I am. The moment that you identify with something, you just limited yourself. You have just condensed yourself. Man, I, I am a millionaire. You know, you know what? <laughs> you could have been a billionaire. You could have been a billionaire. You could have been this. You could have been that. So here's what here's 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 the balancing act. I am everything that I'm supposed to be. If I was not supposed to be this, I would not be this. But for this moment, for this moment, within this matrix, within this third dimension, within this time-space reality, I am this. This is what I am. 
So people ask me, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. I can't tell you. <laughs> it's not that I can't tell you. And I've always had a problem with with with, the, with like labels. Every time you label yourself, you get you put yourself in a straitjacket. You put yourself in a box. You put yourself in a cage. Get rid of the labels. But in order to get rid of the labels, in order to get rid of the labels, you had to identify that you, with yourself that was label less. The part of you that was infinite. The part of you that was that was that was could not be bound. When you come from this awareness, now you can start using the thing that creates the identity that we call the mind, that we call the ego. You can start using this as a tool instead of it being unconsciously used as a weapon. Do you see how this works? So hear me when I say this. Let's start using. Let's start using your 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 your, your your traumas. Let's start using these things for what they were intended for. Let's start using these to help you wake up just a little bit more. And the only way you can wake up is for you to start asking, why? What is this for? Why? Why, why, why? I told you a story about Instagram banning or uh, not allowing me to post any link that had dgmindset.com in it. Instagram is not letting me post anything that has dgmindset.com in it. And I'm like, man, what the... What? DG mindset? That, that's what, what, what? Oh, I got to figure out what it is. So here's what I did. Took time this morning, quiet, meditated, quiet. I said, what is it? Why? This thought, this feeling comes into my awareness and it says, you need to stop holding on to this limited thing. See, the ego's like, yeah, but DG mindset. Yeah, but that if we don't have that. And the self, the spirit's like, are we going to be bound by limited by that? Are we going to be limited? Are we going to be bound by by some links? <laughs> by a website? Is that what we're going to do? Oh, you need to learn then. You need to learn. You need to learn to let go. So maybe ask yourself in this, in, in this life that you're having right now, do I need to let go? Do I need to let go of something? Am I holding on too tight? We've talked about this before. Am I too attached? to an identity, to an expectation, to a past narrative? Do I need to let go of it? Because really the only point of it was, was for you to awaken and continue to expand your self-awareness and continue to help you to remember what you were. But the only way we could do that was to get you to forget. That was the only way. By forgetting is what forces you to go on this balancing act of remembering again. So now when you understand this, guess what you can do? You can thank those. You can thank those who maybe have inflicted this thing that we call pain on us. You can thank those who maybe have slighted you. You can thank those who seem like they were against you. Do you see? We can thank them because we see why. And that, my friends, is the game. So continue. Keep going. 2024 is here. I hope that you are living life and attacking it and being all that you are capable of being. Do the work of remembering and figuring out who you are. We got it. We got it. Before we remember who we and what we are, you got to forget what you weren't. You got to get low, let go of these, these past narratives and these identities by healing them and figuring out like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not my trauma. I'm not my abuse. That was just a situation that happened. I'm not the situation. I'm the awareness of the situation. The mind, though, if you're not aware, you'd think that you were the thoughts that were around it. You thought you were the narrative. That was just the mind. You are not the mind, my friend. You are the infinite indwelling spirit, the self, the consciousness, the being, that which is, the all, the one thing. That is what you are. Remember this. And as always, I wish you nothing but the best on the pathway to your results.